every day I tried to have something for them to do and I might have to spend a little time setting it up but then they would be doing something. So one was question day. So we're in the middle of the course and we've got lots of stuff done and we've had the computers have produced lots of pictures under the students direction. What I want is each person to ask a question about the pictures. No answers are going to be provided or even considered. It just we want a question. We want a list at the end of the day. We want a list of questions, and I had to have a question from everybody. The questions were, in some cases, really good. Sometimes they, oh, I didn't even see that myself. And often, students are afraid to ask questions. When everybody has to ask a question, oh, well, that's a little bit different. My favorite activity was the code swap, and I'll actually let Julia talk most about the code swap. Well, that was my least favorite activity. Um, no one wants to really share their code that they've written because you could be doing it in really bad style or it's not working and you're embarrassed by it. But it's a good thing because you get to see other people's thought processes and coding can be done in so many different ways so you see their approach like, I could use that for next time, that should be something I should do. It was good in that way but it's also really uncomfortable to have to share your embarrassing progress. So. Um, the way it worked was I had uh, seven similar questions. So all the students had to do was write programs that evaluated these particular functions and each group got a different sum to work on. So they had similar but different questions to work from and I gave them enough time to get started on the code and I said, okay, change. Um, one person from each group had to leave and go and join another group and they'd go into the, the, the other group and have the, the old person there explain what they were trying to do and then look at the code. And I don't think anybody had working code at the time when I called a uh, uh, switch. So everybody got to jump in the middle and everybody has different thought processes and I wanted them to see that there were different thought processes and the different ways of attacking similar problems. On our last day we worked on what's called uh, chaos game representation for DNA sequences. This uh, course exercise was more about the mechanics of it. How do you produce a, a chaos game representation? What does it mean? What can you see in the pictures? What kinds of things can you figure out? So I hand wrote as I often did. I hand wrote a, a Maple program and then the students typed in the program. I always had them, whenever I supplied any kind of math, uh, Maple program, they had to actually do some work or have it run through their fingers. Again, it's the activity thing. I could have supplied the program for them to download, but downloading doesn't teach you as much as typing the thing in. Once they had the programs in, they chose, they had to figure out how to generate the sequences that would generate the, the, the pictures. Each person chose different ways to generate the sequences and this gave them different pictures to look at and they shared their pictures and they're trying to figure out why some of them have diagonal stripes, why some of them had horizontal stripes, why some of them were just a mess uh, and, and uh, I think that actually worked really well.